Hello and welcome. I must get back to the gym, I keep muttering to myself. It's been weeks now. Obviously, I couldn't go when I was on holiday and I needed a break to recover from holiday. But now there's really no excuse. My gym going is nothing to boast of, but it has become a habit over probably a decade now. Just trying to reverse the flow of middle age spread before it totally consumes me. I haven't yet been back to the gym. Instead, I've read about it. Read reviews of two books. I've not got time to read whole books. Um, books which question why exercise in general and gyms in particular have become regarded as morally good. Why should there be this sense of compulsion? Why the guilt if you don't go? So after the collect and Bible reading, I'll explore this a bit further. I must reassure you, there'll be no horrible pictures of my sweaty efforts at exercise. Let's pray. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our life's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Bible reading from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, perfect and pleasing will. You may wonder why I've chosen exercise as my topic for this week. It isn't very spiritual, you may well say. Shouldn't we be fo focusing on matters of the soul? But St Paul calls us to use our bodies for true spiritual worship. Worship is not about out-of-body experiences, but in-body self-offering. Christianity is an embodied religion. At its heart is the God who became flesh. And God made us physical, bodily people. And he called all his creation good. So we mustn't despise our bodies. But on the other hand, we do not have to go with the flow of what other people think, the social pressures to maintain the body beautiful. St Paul also said, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So let's do our own thinking. It's all about evolution, the reviewed books intimated the modern fitness obsession goes back to Charles Darwin and the origin of species. The phrase survival of the fittest was not originally Darwin's, but in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it was widely and I think dangerously applied in the human sphere. It used to justify racism and some rather unsavory forms of nationalism and capitalism. You know, sort of fit and lean people for fit and lean businesses. Through that thinking, bodies became objects to be trained, manipulated, drugged and surgically altered to prove that they're useful and with an unrealistic goal of perfection. The bodies, sorry, the Bible's positive idea of the body being a temple of the Holy Spirit is truncated into simply, my body is a temple. It ceases to be just a place of worship, but the very object of worship. Such idolatry comes with a cost. Evolution is often given as the reason why we need all this exercise. Our hunter-gatherer ancestors were always on the move. Except it seems they weren't. 
Research suggests hunter-gatherers spend between five and 10 hours a day sitting down. The reason is simple. If food is in short supply, you don't waste your energy on unnecessary activity. Compared to other mammals, it seems, humans have evolved to be especially exercise averse. So a person who finds exercise difficult is not lazy or undisciplined, but is following an innate urge, one that's no longer evolutionary advantageous, to conserve energy. I like the idea of energy conservation. When I used to play hockey, I used to explain why I had little interest in warming up before a game. You don't want to use up all your energy before the match starts. The conclusion of one author and widely accepted, I think, is that frequent light exercise is best for most people and moralizing over going to the gym is counterproductive. The challenge is to find a form of movement that's either necessary or pleasurable or, well, otherwise rewarding. For some, that may be dancing around the table rather than sweating until you drop. For me, I found that gym more or less works. I don't hugely enjoy it, but I have stopped hating it and I do feel better for it. Lack of exercise certainly leaves me sluggish and dampens my spirits. And I still want to be fit enough to get up the mountains I talked about last week. It's not a moral obligation or a source of guilt or something to show off over. God has given us bodies not to obsess over, but to inhabit and feel comfortable in. We do need to look after them as best we can. We do need to keep them in working order. For as the famous prayer of St. Teresa of Avila puts it, Christ has no body but ours now. So we better do what we can to keep our bodies in working order.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, as the psalmist says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you have knit our bodies together, and that there is not one part of us that is not your handiwork. Help us to keep giving thanks to you, even when we are conscious of aches and pains, and that our bodies won't do what we'd like them to do. Help us to develop good habits that treat our bodies well through the right balance of exercise, good diet and rest that we each need as individuals. Help us then to offer ourselves, body, mind and spirit in your service. And Lord, we pray for those who struggle with matters of their body image, those who are seduced by media images of the supposed perfect body, those who believe they have to punish their bodies in order to be acceptable. May each one know that they stand complete in you and that they are beautiful in your sight. We make our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And hopefully I'm off to the gym now. <laughs>